Good morning, it's Monday the 25th of October and welcome to Atlantic Capital Markets roundup of the coming week's economic highlights to keep an eye out for. As always, we'll give you a quick summary of the macro data points from around the world to expect over the week and we'll then take a look in more detail at some of the bigger stories straight afterwards. So, stay tuned. So, let's take a look at the economic numbers being issued this week. And starting today, we have the IFO German Business Confidence numbers. On Tuesday, the US Consumer Confidence figures. And on Wednesday, the German GFK Consumer Confidence numbers. Also, the latest Australia inflation figures, the US durable goods, the latest Bank of Canada interest rate decision, and the EIA crude oil stockpiles. And finally, a big day here in the UK with the autumn budget, and we'll talk about that in more detail shortly. On Thursday, the Bank of Japan's latest interest rate decision and the European Central Bank's rate decision. And we'll discuss this in detail shortly. Also, the latest German consumer price index, the US jobless claims, and finally on Thursday, the Q3 GDP figures over in the US, which we'll discuss shortly. On Friday, the Australian retail sales figures, the German GDP growth, the consumer price index in the Eurozone and the personal consumption expenditures in the US. And the companies that we'll hear updates from this week are as follows. Well, Monday, the banking reporting season continues with HSBC and we'll discuss those in more detail shortly. On Tuesday, we'll hear from Reckitt Bankissa, Alphabet in the US, also in the US, Robinhood and Twitter and the two US tech giants, Microsoft and Facebook, both of whom we'll discuss in more detail in a moment. On Wednesday, we'll hear from GlaxoSmithKline, Boeing and Ford. And on Thursday, the banking season also brings Lloyds, whom we'll talk about more in a moment, Royal Dutch Shell, in the US, Amazon, Apple and MasterCard. And finally again on Friday for banking season, NatWest. And again, we'll talk about them shortly. And finally, ExxonMobil. Catalysts have been in relatively short supply over the past few weeks, but that is set to change this week, which sees plenty of market moving events. Central banks are back in the spotlight with the European Central Bank, the Bank of Canada and the Bank of Japan all taking monetary policy decisions. And of course, here in the UK, the autumn budget on Wednesday, which will be very much in focus too. Earnings season also ramps up a gear with 50% of US companies due to report and 35% of European companies. In the US, big tech will dominate, whilst in the UK, banks will hog the limelight. So. Let's take a look at some of this week's key stories in detail. HSBC share price has significantly underperformed its peers across the year, although the share price has picked up in recent weeks. The underperformance is most likely a reflection of concerns over the strength of the Chinese economy and fears over the crackdown by Chinese regulators on various business sectors, which has dragged down economic growth. The Chinese economy grew 4.9% year-on-year in the third quarter. The Asian business was largely responsible for the bank's $4.6 billion profit after tax reported in Q1, in addition to the release of $400 million in bad loan reserves. The UK business also performed well, generating $1 billion profit in Q1. Q2 profits came in at $3.9 billion, helped by a further $300 million release of bad loans. Following strong US bank earnings, the main focus for HSBC will be the impact from the fallout over Evergrande and whether it releases further reserves. On Tuesday, we're going to hear from Facebook. Now, after Apple announced its changes in privacy policy, Facebook warned that ad revenue could come under pressure. If Snap's earnings were anything to go by, Facebook's warning could actually be very real. Companies are less likely to spend big on advertising without the comfort of supporting data. Snap downgraded its full year earnings forecast on the back of the changes at Apple. Adding to Facebook's woes, it's been facing accusations of 
putting profits over people, with a Senate hearing investigation. Facebook managed to report a 56% rise in Q2 revenue and forecast beating profit of $3.61 a share. Monthly active users also rose 7% year on year. And despite these concerns, Q3 profits are still expected to be solid at $3.16 per share. Also on Tuesday, we'll be hearing the latest from Microsoft. Now, Microsoft's share price has been steadily rising across the year, hitting record highs earlier this month. In its April release, Q3 revenue was ahead of forecasts at $41.7 billion, slightly below the $43.1 billion reported in the earlier quarter. Profits were also up an impressive 38% year-on-year, with a solid performance reported across the business. In Q4, revenue reached $46.15 billion, a record high thanks to a 51% jump in revenue from the cloud computing segment Azure. However, supply chain issues hit PC sales, where the picture was more mixed. Q1 revenue is expected to be between $43.3 billion and $44.2 billion. Earnings per share is expected at $2.06. Wednesday brings us the autumn budget here in the UK. Now, Rishi Sunak has already announced the biggest rise in personal taxes in 20 years, lifting national insurance for employers, employees and the self-employed, plus a rise in dividend tax. Will this be enough to balance the books? Unlikely. There is a good chance Rishi Sunak will need more revenue to meet spending pressure. However, the economy is still far from firing on all cylinders and the coming months are already looking challenging for many households. Inflation is surging, energy costs are rising, furlough is winding down and other pandemic support measures such as the universal credit top up are also coming to an end. Signs of a slowing recovery could empty the Chancellor's kitty. Sunak could look to cut VAT on household energy bills. There have also been calls to raise inheritance tax and capital gains tax too. Additionally, with COP26 next month, pressure could be high to tackle climate change, so we could see an outline for a plan as to how the government intends to encourage houses to do this. After upbeat earnings for US banks and last week Barclays impressed with solid numbers, the pressure is on Lloyds to outperform. However, unlike Barclays and most of its US counterparts, Retail banking is Lloyd's bread and butter, with the economic backdrop deteriorating since the latest results as consumers become more cautious over their spending. Credit demand is likely to be lower, hitting a key source of revenue for Lloyd's. Furthermore, the rising number of COVID cases in the UK and the clouding economic outlook could put the brakes on these banks when it comes to releasing large portions of reserves set aside to deal with bad loans and defaults across the pandemic. As a result, the bump, up in, uh, the bump up to earnings is likely to be less than that of its US counterparts. Mortgage lending could also be slowing as the government's supportive tax measures roll off. However, with the yield curve steepening, this could help lift a depressed net interest income, or NII, going forward. Thursday also brings the latest European Central Bank's rate decision. Now, whilst major central banks across the globe are moving towards hiking interest rates, the ECB stands out from the crowd as one of the few central banks looking to maintain its loose monetary policy. The central bank is not looking to raise interest rates from their historic low anytime soon. The ECB also has its PEP bond buying program, which saw purchases slowing in the last meeting, although the ECB was clear that the rate of purchases could be ramped up if needed. However, inflation in the bloc is running at a 13-year high of 3.4%. In Germany, CPI is above 4%. That said, Eurozone core CPI is 1.9% below the ECB's 2% target. Whilst there are more discussions surrounding tightening policy, the doves still outnumber the hawks in Europe's central bank. And finally on Thursday, we'll hear the GDP figures for Q3 over in the US. The advanced print of the Q3 GDP is expected to show a marked slowdown back to a more normal level of slightly more than 3%. And this is down sharply from the 6.7% levels recorded in the second quarter. 
However, this is well aligned with pre-pandemic levels, and this is also likely to be welcomed by the doves at the Federal Reserve, who have expressed increasing concern over the pace of growth in the US. That said, a stronger than forecast reading could prompt speculation that the Fed could adopt a more aggressive approach to tightening monetary policy. So as a result, do keep an eye on the US dollar and of course the US indices. And finally, on Friday, we'll hear from NatWest. Now, the NatWest share price has performed well across the year, rallying over 40% since the start of the year. The bank boosted its profitability across the first half of the year, and with the Bank of England on the cusp of a rate hike, this could improve further. NII has been a clear weak point for NatWest at 1.61%, but should rise going forward. NatWest as with its peers, has also been steadily releasing money put away for bad loan provisions, which never materialised to the extent expected. In Q1, the bank released £102 million, and in Q2, £605 million. These releases helped boost H1 profits to £1.84 billion, and prompted the bank to restart its dividend and announce a share buyback for the second half of the year. The third quarter is expected to see loan growth pick up thanks to high mortgage lending, amid a strong housing market. Deposits are also expected to be solid, returning to more levels. So to wrap up, let's take a look at the dividends for this week. In the FTSE 100, we'll hear from Ferguson. And in the FTSE 250, we'll hear from Hammerson, Decra Pharmaceuticals, Dunelm, Renishaw, the City of London Investment Trust, and finally Tritax Big Box. So that's what's to look out for this coming week. And don't forget to join us for our rundown every Friday morning, where we'll look back at what's happened in the markets over the week with our own thoughts and analysis. Also, don't forget to check out our app, which you can download from the App Store to your mobile phone, which gives you a whole host of useful functionality, including the latest financial news as it happens, as well as monitoring your open positions. And of course, why not subscribe to the channel to make sure you get to hear the moment we release not only our regular bi-weekly reports, but also our special market reports as they're released. So until Friday from all of us here at Atlantic Capital Markets, have yourself a great week.